All right, welcome back to our fourth episode of the uh, Canes Baseball Great Lakes College Spotlight Series. This is Brian Blondell, owner and director of baseball operations. This week, we're excited to connect with Grace College senior right-handed pitcher Hunter Schumacher. Um, each week, we're going to continue to connect with former players now at the college level and just kind of see how things are going for them, learn a little bit about their journey, and uh, try to dive right in. So, um, um, Hunter, thanks for joining us today. How you doing, bud? I'm doing well. How are you? Good, man. Doing well. Hey, so uh, let's just kind of kick it off for the listeners here. Um, you know, tell everybody a little bit about yourself and, and where you're from. So I'm from uh, Middlebury, Goshen area, Indiana, up northern Indiana area. Um, I went to Westview High School. I graduated from there. Um, enjoyed it. I loved it there. Um, I love the area I grew up in, small town. I'm a country boy, so I enjoy the small town feel. And that's ultimately actually what led me to Grace, to be honest. Awesome. How long have you been playing baseball? Where did you where did you actually start and then kind of your journey throughout kind of leading yourself to grace? Um, I grew up playing baseball. I think I started playing baseball probably when I was like five, four or five. I mean, you play in the backyard with your dad, but I think little league wise, I think I started playing when I was five, T-ball. Played little league until I was like eight or nine. Then I just played fully travel ball until high school and then throughout high school until college. Um, I went, you know, obviously, like I said, I went to Westview. I went to Northridge High School actually first and transferred to Westview after my sophomore year. Oh, okay. enjoyed that. Was one of my favorite, best, most enjoyable moments of my life was doing that and changing school. So I enjoyed that, and the coaching over there was phenomenal. So I loved all of that and led me here, which my high school coach and my college coach played together in college. So it helped me a little bit of connection, and I couldn't have been more thankful for it. And then uh, the, the travel bus side, uh, you know, tell me a little bit about like who, you know, who you played with, and then uh, who, who was your coaches uh, along that way? Um, I played with a couple guys. One, Jake Bishop, he already did an interview for this. Um, my dad was also a coach on a couple of the teams. Mike Logan was a coach. I played with him. Um, a lot of the guys in my grade were dudes that were I went to high school with in the area, or they were just area guys, and, and honestly, we enjoyed it. Um, it was a lot of fun. I loved playing travel ball growing up. A couple of my buddies are at Moorhead State now, too, um, so I hope they're killing it down there, but – yeah, it's been, it was really enjoyable growing up and I couldn't be more thankful for the opportunities that I had. Awesome, man. So uh, obviously you've kind of, you've been at a lot of different levels, right? You've, you've gone to two high schools, you played travel baseball for a while. Multiple coaches obviously typically have some form of impacts uh, for you. Um, can you name a couple and, you know, kind of where you feel like those impacts kind of helped you and where they've led you to today? I would say first off my dad, just cause he pushed me really hard when I was younger. Um, there was days I didn't want to take BP when I was younger and I was hitting at that point. Still, I mean, like didn't want to take BP, but he made me go in the shed and take BP in the cages. Um, and he, he was very hard on me, but I couldn't be more thankful because it's helped me get into the man I am today. Not only the player, um, another coach I would say is my high school coach, Jason Ron. He's one of the most impactful people in my life, he gave me an opportunity and I took advantage of what I felt like. And I think that was what really, took me to the next level in baseball and, and my love for baseball just continued to grow just by their act and his impact in my life and the coaches over there at Westview and in college coach Roth taking a chance on me as a kid. Um, I mean, I threw 80 miles an hour to 82 miles an hour in high school. I wouldn't throw him very hard and he took a chance on me and, and now he's got me throwing in the low nine. So I couldn't be more thankful for that too. And he's, I have a lot of my success is credited to him as well. Yeah, I mean, I think you, you know, you can always look back and, and see that. And so I think that's pretty, that's pretty cool. I mean, obviously, um, you know, both not only just on the field, but off the field, right? So, um, you know, as, as we kind of relate to, you know, the travel ball scene, right, and, and you kind of get out and travel balls obviously become, you know, even since you've been, been through it, um, you know, it changes dramatically. So, um, you know, what were some of the experiences that you had playing travel baseball and, you know, maybe some of the things you can look back on today and say, man, you know, those were, those were just some unbelievable memories. I love, you know, I love that. I hated that. Um, you know, what were some of the things that you can kind of reflect back on now? Well, I think for everybody that plays travel ball, the first thing you can say you hated was the 8 a.m. games. Everybody <laughs> hated the 8 a.m. games. I know the coaches hated it. I know the parents hated it. I know the players hated it. Those were... <laughs> Those were a grind, man. They they suck, but so it, true. It, you were good, and you won those games. I mean, usually you put yourself in a good position. Um, I would say one big thing that comes to mind right away is our trip. We went out to Omaha when I was fourteen, I think thirteen or fourteen. Um, we went out to Omaha, Nebraska during the College World Series. Played a tournament out there. 
getting to go to those college world series games i mean like as all kids you grow up wanting to play on those levels i think it was awesome to get to just see that see the environment i think we watched florida play miami one game and vandy play cal state fullerton and those were just awesome games and awesome times to be there i mean it was one of those exciting times of my life yeah i'll tell you omaha um you know just being a part of the travel ball world for now 16, 17 years, I've had the opportunity to kind of go out there three, I think three consecutive um, times. And um, you're right. I mean, that atmosphere, right. I mean, um, obviously getting an opportunity to, to kind of play um, guys, you know, see guys play that are at that collegiate level um, power fives, um, the atmosphere that's out there with the fans. I mean, it's just, it's absolutely remarkable. So um, that definitely is, is, is a highlight. I know just for me as a coach um, and being around it. So um, yeah, that's kind of cool to hear you say that because I, I agree. Um, so, Hey, so you say you're at grace um, obviously in your senior year now. So, um, you know, tell me, tell me a little bit about that journey, kind of what led you to grace, um, you know, and, and um, you know, why did you end up ultimately choosing grace and kind of lead me down that path? I think, um, a lot of it came down to when I came on, I came on my visit on campus. I came as a junior on a visit, not even as a baseball visit, just as a in general visit. And I liked it. I thought it was nice. I thought the small campus was nice. Like I'm just a small town type of person. And, and so I liked that family aspect. Um, and then my senior year, I had interest in another school actually um, in the conference Huntington. And I was, they didn't offer me a spot. They offered me a walk-on spot. And I was like, eh, I thought about taking it. And then my um, high school coach who played with Coach Roth, my college coach, he he connected me with him. He brought me on a visit, offered me a scholarship. And I think I committed two or three weeks after he offered me and I signed here and came here. And I couldn't be more thankful for it. Um, my freshman year was the COVID year. So, I mean, I played, we played in 16 games and then everything got canceled. So that kind of sucked. Yeah. Um, but that does give me a fifth year of eligibility that I'm going to use. Um, but it was very, very exciting to like come here and and just have learned so much in the in the first four years I've been here um I think just progressively getting better each and every year um he our coach sent me and three other guys down to Louisiana there's a place called Top Velocity down there um that we went to and trained there for um a summer after my sophomore year I think that really elevated my pitching game um immensely it made me start throwing harder more consistently and just made you work on your craft, got in the weight room, just made you stronger. And I think that was really fun. And as a freshman, you come in and you're, you're kind of like, okay, like I got to earn a spot. And I think the fact is just like, you got to have that mindset all four years, just continue to get better. You can't get complacent. And I think I've seen guys coming in and out of the program that have been complacent with one foot out the door when they already are here. And it's like, if you're not all in, I don't want you here at all. So, I mean, it's, yeah, it, it definitely has an effect on you. I've met a lot of new people, met a lot of new relationships, played against a lot of old friends in the league um, at other schools. And so it's just been a growing experience, a learning experience, and, and I'm very thankful for this time in my life. Awesome, man. Awesome. Well, it sounds like you definitely found a found a home for sure. Well, it looks like, I mean, as I dive in and I look, you know, it looks like um, you've had, you know, ha had a decent start, I'd say. I mean, maybe, maybe a little up and down for what you guys were, you know, probably hoping for. I mean, currently you guys are, um, you know, 12 and 13 on the year um, overall. Um, looks like you're doing pretty well. Um, three starts. You've had 11 appearances. I know, obviously, a little bit more out of the pin, um, which is kind of your forte, right? 17 mini pitch, 26 strikeouts. Um, got four saves already on the season with a with a with a touch over you know three and a half ERA, which is obviously very respectable. And if I'm not mistaken, right, you're the current Grace College uh, saves leader. Um, so tell tell me tell me a little bit about the season. Tell me about the you know the saves record, kind of where that's all kind of you know fit in, and 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 just you know how that all kind of comes together for you. Yeah, I mean, as a, from a team perspective, I think I mean nobody's going to be satisfied with a game under 500 or three games over 500. Obviously, everyone wants to be undefeated. You want to win as many games as possible. And, and the reality of it is some of the teams we've played are definitely better than us, and we've take, took games from them, and we've lost games that we shouldn't have lost. And, I mean, I think every team in America can say that happens every year. Yeah. Um, I think for us it's just been we lost some guys from last year's team to some other things, and it just that hurt us a little bit, I think, from a personal aspect. I think that – our team this year is much more, um, much more of a unit, co cohesive together. We we really play well together. 
um, and we care about each other. And like, that's really important. I think um, with any team is having the love and the trust in each other that, Hey, like we're going to go out there and give our best every time. And, you know, we've played so far, we've played three of the best four teams in conference. Our conference records are not what we want to be at this moment, but we've played three of the four best teams. So I think that gives us something to kind of go off of as like, you know, like we, 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 battled and we've had a lot of injuries so it's you know our our number one starter has been out a little bit now so it's that hurts us a little bit just been different guys banged up here and there and so that that kills you um and we have a lot of youth a lot of young guys a lot of freshmen sophomores that are having to step up and seeing those guys grow has just been it's been exciting because I just want to see those guys succeed because I know when I was in third grade I was nervous pitching and just hoping I wouldn't give up a home run or just get barreled and so it was like I, I, I hope those guys succeed and I just every day see those guys work and so that impresses me from a personal side um yeah I've had I've had a pretty solid year so far um I am more of a closer for us sometimes I have to start a game to just get us to put up a couple zeros to start the game that way just get off, off to the right foot um not my favorite thing in the world to do but I'll do it if that helps our team um but yeah, from from a closing perspective, I do hold the saves record here, Grace, and and that's something I'm really thankful for. And a lot of that credit goes to my coach for and my teammates for putting me in those those situations. Um, but yeah, like I love the adrenaline rush of coming out of the bullpen to close the game. Just coming out of the bullpen is my has been something I've never thought I would like. I always liked to be a starter in high school. Coming into college, I've never realized that I would like coming out of the bullpen so much in my life. And I think that's what. It just makes me successful. I pitch a lot of energy and, and my adrenaline through the roof. And I know, I know the guys like playing behind me because I do give my all every time and I expect them to do the same. Yeah. You know, and I mean, honestly, um, you know, from most kids coming out of high school, right. Most kids are starters. Right. And so having that, uh, you know, that shift to, to learning, you know, at the college level to either come out of the pen be a closer, um, you know, it, it takes a different mindset. It, you know, you have to kind of train your body and your mind um, to kind of be in a different position, right? You got to come in and be full go maybe for, you know, 25 pitches um, or less, maybe a couple more. But um, at the end of the day, it, it's totally a different mindset. So, um, you know, for most kids, it's, it's a huge adjustment and um, you've definitely, you know, relished in that role. So, uh, you know, definitely congratulations on that because it's not easy to do for sure. Yeah, so Hunter has it. You know, oh yeah, the, the mental side of it's definitely the the biggest thing. I think um, the mentality of closing a game is you can't sure. go out there and, and think of to yourself, oh I might struggle here, I might do this. Like you gotta have the thought process every time of I'm gonna succeed and I'm gonna beat you, and if you don't, Absolutely. you've already lost. Yeah, totally. No, I think that's that that's the toughest part right there for sure. So some people, some people can have that makeup and some people cannot, right? And 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 that's why you look at the big league level. I mean, it's it's night and day. Um, those guys, the mentality, the sitting around all day waiting, um, am I going to get an opportunity? And then to be mentally and physically ready to go when they get their name called, right? To to go out there and shut the door, um, you know, be that guy that the coach can count on to get the last three outs, maybe the last four to five outs right of, of a game so um yeah for sure what's uh what's the next steps what are you what are you looking at you know after after uh you know after the season's over you know you got any summer plans um are you going to be playing in the summer not playing um you're going to go back for again sounds like your COVID fifth year um so just kind of walk me through that journey yeah summer wise um, I'm looking for an internship right now I just got to do that um to prepare myself for after college obviously and so I'm looking for that. I'm also, I've had some offers to play in a couple of summer leagues. Um, so yeah. I've, I've definitely considered those. I, I do want to stay close to home. Um, I know there's actually a new league and a new team coming out of Elkhart that I've been offered to play on. So I've definitely considered that. If I can find an yes. interest that allows that. Um, I think that'd be a pretty cool opportunity in their inaugural season um, to play for that. Um, plus, I kind of want to live at home. It's my last summer before I go off into the real world, you know, and get a job and Yep. I do love living at home and being able to go in my backyard and go fishing every night, which is very nice. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I think from a summer perspective, it's just going to be about getting in the weight room, continuing to get stronger, continuing to get stay in good shape and uh, preparing myself for my fifth year. And my fifth year right now, I have not fully decided where I'm going to take that at. Um, right As of right now, I would come back to Grace. I just have not completely had those conversations with my family and the thought process on it about everything, I guess. Um, I do love it here, Grace. Don't get me wrong. I just have not fully 
completely put away the option of leaving. Um, sure. But I think it would be cool to, to play somewhere else too. Yeah. But I also love it here. So that's, it's definitely something that's been going through my mind a lot. Um, I have not fully committed to what I want to do yet. So I'll take some time after the season to do that as as right now, I just more want to focus on, you know, the season and, and trying to win as many games as we can. Um, so, yeah, I'd say that's that's mostly my my journey right now. Um, I'm not fully committed to, to knowing what I'm going to do next year yet. Yeah, sure, man. I mean, those are all, you know, really tough decisions, right? I mean, we, we realize, obviously, we got to do and prepare for what is what is after college. But, you know, definitely enjoying the opportunities to be able to play and do that and, and making sure that it's the right fit for you both personally and then obviously, you know, academically, you want to make sure that you're doing that. So, um, yeah, and, you know, for the summer, you're right. The uh, the Elkhart Miracle um, they have formed right so that's pretty cool I think that's a I think that's a good thing I mean um, I think that's something that you know for our local guys here um, in that area um, you know that want to come home and be able to you know stay at home and, and be close to family um, especially if they haven't necessarily had that opportunity um, I think it provides a really nice avenue for our guys to be able to have that um, and a good good obviously league to be able to compete in so. Um, yeah, I think that could be end up being a nice little thing. So a, a, as we start to wrap up, Hunter, tell me, you know, obviously, as you think back on your journey, right, both through high school, college, you know, and, and to any of our younger guys or high school guys that are out there thinking, man, I, I'm not really sure if, you know, I, I'm cut out to make it. Um, you know, what do I need to do? Um, you know, what work do I need to put in? You know, what, what message would you have for those guys uh, if they're listening today just to kind of, you know, get them on the path to, to believing in themselves and understand the process that they have to take to, to play at the next level to be successful like you have? I think a couple a couple of things, actually. The first thing I would say is there's a saying that baseball is 90% mental and 10% physical, and I think that's one of the most true statements ever out there. Um, I think mentally you just have to to believe in yourself and to, to find the confidence that, you know what, you know, if I'm not feeling it that day and my fastball is not exploding out of the hand at 90 or your slider is not, as sharp that day, like you just got to have the confidence, hey, I can get this done. I have good enough stuff as from a pitching point, as a hitting point. I mean, you got to believe in yourself that every time you're going to go up the bat, you're going to get hit. And I think that is a big aspect of it mentally. Physically, I think for my aspect, I feel like in high school, I didn't lift as much as I should have. And I feel like that altered me a little bit. Um, I think since coming to college, though, I've started to live in the gym. And I think that is something that um, everybody has to adapt to before you get to college because when you get to college your coaches are going to expect you to come in in decently good shape and strong I mean what does it take to throw hard you got to be flexible and you got to be pretty strong I mean obviously natural genetics <laughs> help too but having <laughs> flexibility mobility that kind of stuff from an aspect of a physical aspect coming in decently good shape you know running in the off season this summer I'll be on a I'll probably be on a program that has me running three days a week and I'll be lifting uh, probably five days a week maybe six days a week just depending but I mean, a lot of it is baseball specific lifts. You're not trying to go in there and get huge biceps, which is obviously nice, but you got to go in there and um, lift like an athlete. Um, I think that's a big thing. And lifting has definitely changed my life from a pitching aspect. So I think that's a, another big thing. And I think academically, just just staying in the books and, and preparing yourself academically, because like if you want to go play at a lot of these nice schools, big schools, and like you have the talent to do so, if you're not smart enough, you're not going there. Um, and they won't, they, you're not going to get in. So it's going to be tough to go there. So, I mean, I think from a academic aspect, aspect, you just got to stay in the books and continue to just work hard. And I think it'd be good. Well, excellent, man. Hey, I, I appreciate, uh, you know, definitely, uh, catching up with you for sure. Um, you know, and, and sharing, you know, your journey, which obviously is, you know, everybody's journey is a little unique. Um, you know, definitely, you know, excited to continue to watch you and, um, you know, I've, I've loved to kind of follow um, along over the last four years with your successes over at Grace. And uh, I know Coach Roth is is definitely ecstatic. I mean, it loves having you. and I, I've loved kind of, you know, being along with that that ride, obviously. So, um, you know, I definitely want to wish you the, the best of uh, luck the rest of the year for both you and Grace and hope, uh, you know, you guys end up, uh, you know, kind of having a good finish to your season here for sure for your senior year. Absolutely. Thank you very much. I appreciate the time. Yeah, absolutely. Well, hey, guys, that wraps up uh, episode number four of our Spotlight series here. Um, just continue to make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel at Canes Baseball GL. 
uh, more live interviews like this one with Hunter. We'll have live game footage, player spotlights, uh, more throughout the season. Uh, next week, we've got uh, uh, former NIC player of the year, Ben Gregory, who's now a freshman over at Maryville University. Uh, he'll be joining us and uh, look forward to talking to Ben. So uh, take care and have a good day.